It's Adam from Lucid Pixel, and welcome back. Now today I'd like to take you on a journey into my past. And there's a very good chance that I've already kind of spoken about this in the past. But this topic keeps coming up time and time again from different artists. It's the topic of frustration. I get emails about it. I have people reaching out to me on ArtStation about it. I have people Instagram me about it. I get emails about it. <laughs> people who are frustrated. And for very good reason. It's Sometimes it feels like, as an artist, you're literally shooting arrows into the dark. You have absolutely no idea where you're going with your career. Depending on where you live, even if you live in a big city like where I'm from in Montreal, you can feel like resources are scarce or job opportunities are very scarce. It's very difficult to get professional feedback and have somebody just give you a fair, honest, unbiased opinion of your stuff from a perspective of somebody knows the kind of career you want to get into. There's so much feeling very often like you're on your own. And I can very much empathize and relate to this situation if you're going through it. And there's a very good chance that you're going through it. So to take you back into my career, into the, my past, one of the things I've spoken about many times is how my career path was far, far from a linear success. <laughs> far from it. It flip-flopped a lot. I was redefining myself constantly, trying to keep up with the trends, trying to keep up with, with the demand of different studios. I would rebuild entire portfolios for studios I was interested in getting into and really rebranding myself as an artist to send the application and have them either A, not even reply to it, or B, let us know that that ship had sailed, that project was over and they'd moved on to different things and different styles. And I realized at that point that very targeted effort that I made was an utter waste of time. And furthermore, it didn't even contribute to the direction and style that I wanted my career to go. I have sent out hundreds of thousands of CVs by hand. I have trudged through the slush and the snow and the cold and the rain. And that's not an exaggeration. I'm a Canadian. A. And show up at Human Resources and there's nobody at the front desk. Or they say, we'll let you know. And they never do. I've even gone as far as... I, I mentioned this to one of my students recently. That I got a call about a year ago. Now, I'm 45 years old, okay? And that's significant. I got a call about a year ago from somebody who says, Hi, is this Adam? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, I don't know, making up a name. It's Trevor Smith's. It's a fictional name. And I said, hi, Trevor Smith. <laughs> How can I help you? And he said, yeah, uh, you applied for a job at our studio. And I said, I did what? I don't remember applying to any studios. Yeah, we've got your CV right here. You're interested in animation and blah, blah, blah. And I said, animation? I haven't done animation in about 10 years. You know? Or 15 years, come to think of it. And he said, yeah, you applied to it. And I, I realized he was replying to a CV. He was replying to an application form that I must have given out about 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, I'm sorry to break this to you, but that Adam doesn't exist anymore. That that Adam is gone. He's not in the house. He's gone away in a very Tyler, Tyler Durden type of way, right? So my career was was really a, a test of strength and a test of patience and a test of perseverance, swallowing my ego, uh, pushing myself to, to, I'd say, you know, push when you say pushing yourself to new limits, I think it was pushing myself to new limits of how much disappointment I could deal with, how much disappointment I could, I could ingest before I gave up. And I never gave up. And that's the thing. When you love something, you can tell yourself you're going to give up on it, but it always ends up finding you again. You might take breaks from it every now and then, but you'll always come back. <laughs> it's like that old crush that never goes away. So what changed? What was the psychological switch that went off in my brain that changed things for me? 
Well, it was this. It was sitting in a pool of frustration and really being at the edge of defeat. And one of my favorite expressions that I've quoted in the past is, true change doesn't happen until you're on the brink. It's every time I've been on the brink, been on the brink of of my, or at least been on the brink of my health or at least fearing it because I was a 20 year smoker and I started to feel sick and I started to think that smoking was causing permanent damage. That got me to quit really quickly. Or being on the brink with a relationship where things got so toxic that it was do or die. So I got out of there and finally broke a pattern and broke a relationship that was just a downhill spiral anyways. Thankfully, I got out of that. And I also found myself on the brink of my career where I thought to myself, I cannot survive doing this anymore. If not physically, the physical exhaustion of trying to keep up this stupid rat race, but the psychological, the emotional defeat that comes with just saying, hey, buddy, maybe you just don't have what it takes. Sometimes you just got to swallow your ego and say, Adam, you're just not good enough. Okay. You're good. You've put your years in fine. You can draw, but you just don't, you just don't make the cut. Sorry. And I sat there with that reality, looking me in the face and thinking to myself, all of my friends are working. All my friends have full-time jobs. They've been working in studios for five, six years. And here I am on the chopping block as usual. Here I am setting up my CV. Here I am in unemployment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I sat there in this pool of frustration and I thought to myself, what are you frustrated about? Number one, I was frustrated about chasing after opportunities, chasing after jobs. This studio is looking for work. Send your CV, redefine yourself, update your portfolio, send it. No reply. Oh, this one's looking for one. Okay, redefine myself, repackage myself, spend another two, three weeks, get some artwork or two couple months, get some artwork, send my CV, wait, 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 no reply or a negative reply. So that was one frustration. The other frustration was the lack of access to education, the lack of access to, I spent, which one of the things you need to realize is you have access. If you're a younger artist and you grew up in the age of, of the internet, you have countless resources. You have controlpaint.com. You've got Ahmed al You've got Cynics. You've got Anthony Jones. You've got Tyler Edlin. You've got Clint Kearley. You've got Borodante. You've got Trent Kanyuga. You've got this just endless well of amazing artists that you can learn from. There's mentorships. There's schoolism with Bobby Chu and a whole plethora of, of some of the best top tier artists and teachers there are on the market. You've got this bottomless pit of amazing resources. That wasn't the case when I was, when I was your age, if you're a younger artist. I had the library, the bookstore, if I could find some books that were good. I had, there weren't any TV shows that taught art. There was, there was no art resource page. There might have been the occasional art show like Bob Ross or Secret City, but those are just me enjoying watching people draw type of thing. So a lot of my learning, if it wasn't in school, was nowhere. It was just practice, practicing whatever I know. So access to resources, access to, to sources of learning and sources of feedback on my work was so desired and so scarce. The other thing that I was frustrated about was I was truly a 2D artist. I was an animator. I was a cartoon animator at the time. And then I got into fantasy art, which was traditional 2D fantasy art, digital painting, what I do today, essentially. So access to the kind of work that I like and access to resources, learning resources. These were all things that I just desperately needed. And I felt completely alone sitting there without any clue on where to get, where to learn, where to improve and what the hell to improve in the first place. And I had an epiphany. It was also around that time that I had been hired as a teacher. And I loved teaching. Teaching was, if I think about my career, my career history, I would say that despite working at great studios or at least reputable studios, <laughs> studios with popular names, teaching was my first true love. 
because it connected me, as I've spoken in the past about it in other videos, it connected me, it reconnected me with my 2D traditional brothers and sisters, the animation department at the CGIP of Old Montreal. But I was still frustrated because I knew at that point in my career that as much as I love teaching, there was a challenge when it came to teaching. And the challenge was the fact that, well, you can only pack so many students into a classroom, right? There's a, you can only pack so many artists into a certain class until a certain point, it becomes very difficult as a teacher and as a student to learn in that environment. And schools, when they specialize in something, particularly when schools are as good as the CJ Beauvoir Montreal in the animation department, um, it becomes a very hot commodity and it becomes a very popular place to apply. So people start applying in droves until, the cer until a certain point that list of rejected application forms gets bigger and bigger. So that leaves a lot of artists out in the dust. It leaves a lot of art aspiring artists without a place to learn, without access to that place, to that resource. So any, any of the schools in any city that become popular, that have great artists and great teachers and great students and a great reputation get overwhelmed very quickly. So sitting there again with all of these frustrations rolling around in my head, I realized at that very point, the most important lesson when it comes to making a name for yourself and building a career, particularly if the type of person who like, who's looking to build something independently. And that is frustration is the foundation for innovation. If you're sitting there feeling frustrated and defeated and overwhelmed and exhausted, instead of focusing on the negative side of that, ask yourself the question, what is it that I'm frustrated about? Really brainstorm it. I recommend writing about it because when you write, write things out, it gives you the opportunity to visualize your thoughts and organize them a lot more effectively instead of just having them jumble around in your brain. Look at them, visualize them, and ask yourself the question, how can I fix that? If you look at some of the greatest innovations ever created by our species, it's very easy to see that most of them were probably created by people who had to endure overwhelming frustration and challenge. In fact, I would say that frustration and challenge is necessary. It's a necessary ingredient to making great change because you have to have a passionate, passionate desire for change. You have to have a passionate need for things to improve. You have to be on the brink of defeat sometimes in order to say, I have to do something different. I have, to, if I can't find a solution, if a solution won't present itself to me, I have to make that solution happen myself. How the hell can I do that? It's a survival instinct. And don't underestimate the power of a survival instinct. You might not think you can scale the side of a mountain wall until you realize that if you let go of that wall, you will plummet to your death. Hmm? So you grip on with dear life, even if every, even if the skin is filed off of every one of your fingers down to the bone and you're in more excruciating pain than you've ever been in your entire life, you will not let go. <laughs> you won't let go of the side of that mountain until you're safe. You might not have any hands left at the end of it, but you'll still have your life. And that's how the human spirit will pull you through. If you're sitting there feeling completely defeated, feeling like you've reached the end. Realize that you've just gotten started. Realize that if you're at the end, you're most likely at the beginning. And realize that if you think that life is going to kill you, if you think that life is going to defeat you, if you think that life is going to consume you whole and spit you out the other end, you have no clue how capable you are of surviving even your worst nightmares. Now I'm going to throw something in here, something that I always make a point of mentioning. There are natural challenges and there are challenges that you might not be equipped to 
handle, where perhaps you suffer th from things like from something like depression or ADHD or uh, bipolar disorder or schizophrenia, something that's far more intense and something that is not a manifestation of your will. It's more of a manif manifestation of a chemical imbalance in your brain or your body. If that's the case, then if anybody's telling you if there's a will, there's a way, then they don't know what the hell they're talking about. What you need is medication and or professional help, okay? So I'm not a professional <laughs> psychologist. I'm not a doctor. I'm an art teacher, right? And I'm a friend, but I'm not a doctor. So uh, I'm not here to tell you to will yourself through a depression. No, I'm here to tell you if you're dealing with something like that, then you need to speak to somebody. You need to be open about it. You need to be very vocal about it and you need to get help to give you the tools to be able to navigate, navigate around that so you can, in that point, start to explore your passions. But you gotta overcome that obstacle first. But if you're not dealing with that, if you don't have that extra obstacle to deal with, then I want you to sit back, take a deep breath, have a good, hard, open-eyed look at your biggest frustrations in life whatever they might be it might be for it might be relationship it might be employment it might be skill it might be any of the above if you find yourself in this point of frustration if you find yourself overwhelmed or if you find yourself at a dead end i want you to sit back take a breath and ask yourself this question how many other people around me are feeling the same way I am? And as a fellow artist and as a teacher and as a YouTuber and as somebody who communicates with a lot of different artists worldwide, I guarantee you, if you're feeling frustrated and defeated and exhausted and overwhelmed and you feel like a useless, talentless piece of crap, the gross majority of you artists out there are your kindred spirits. Most people out there, most artists tend to be particularly hard on themselves. We are a self-governing force that have a hard time sometimes finding the help and finding the feedback that we want. So trust me, if you're frustrated, you are, you're in the majority, okay? And as a, as a result of that, that means that you can be, if you so choose, a resource for so many other artists out there for change, to heal. You can be a resource for other people because you get them, you understand them, and as a team, working with other people, you can help other people get through these struggles, be it as a teacher, be it as a fellow artist, be it as somebody who can offer feedback, be it as a YouTuber, like me, who, who offers advice online or who's just there to share their day-to-day -day experiences and their day-to-day -day frustrations with other people so that other artists like you feel they have company in their misery. Misery loves company, right? So you can sit there and you can sit there and bitch and draw together as far as that goes. But don't think for a moment that you're useless. Don't think for a moment that you lack the skill or the talent to become something, I guarantee you, you do. And I am by far not anywhere near the best artist you'll ever meet. I'm just a trained artist. The only difference between you and I is the fact that I've just, I've just been around longer. I have more years under my belt. But rest assured, with the resources that you have available, by the time you reach my age, you will be 10 times the artist I am. And you will be 10 times more valuable as a resource to other people. I look at the stuff that my 19-year-old is drawing right now. She is destroying the record that I thought I had when I was 19. She is a mind-blowingly talented artist. And she is far surpassing me, far quicker than I'd like to admit. No, I love admit it. I love admitting it. I'm proud of her. She's incredible. But just know that that you are a source for healing and you are a source for good. You're not just a lost soul with no talent. 
You are and will be very valuable to anybody you ever reach out to. Don't ever take your quality for granted. And with that said, I love you all with all my heart and happy painting. Take care.